Problem one says, a nine-year-old fourth grader is 78,840 hours or 4,730,400 minutes old on his birthday. You put it like that, he sounds pretty old. How is his age in minutes written in word form? So they want to know about the age in minutes. And they want it to be in word form. Since they're asking about his age in minutes, I'm going to cross out the age in hours. I don't need to use that. And I'm going to circle the age in minutes. All they're asking me to do is change this number to a word. Since I'm going to be changing the number, a place value chart is going to help me out a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and draw one here. I'm going to need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places on this place value chart. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. No, if you don't have the new math packet, like I said, make sure you have a piece of paper and all the work that I'm going to do, you do on the paper. I'm going to make sure I label my place values. Start with the ones place then the tens, the hundreds. Right here we'd have a comma. Who can tell me the next place values after ones, tens, and hundreds? What place values come next? Jaylene? Uh, thousands. Thousands, and after thousands, what's, that, what's the next one? Ten thousand. Ten thousand. And after ten thousand comes what? Hundred thousands. Hundred thousands. Awesome. Jada, this one's not necessarily a week. Or it'll say week six on the front, but this is what you're looking for. First six weeks review, week six. And after a hundred thousand, I need another comma. After 100,000, what's the next place value? The one place value I have left. Christopher, what's that last place value? The one that I don't have a label for yet. Million. Million. Awesome job. I'm going to copy my number into this place value chart, making sure that my commas end up where they should be. Four, comma, seven, three, zero comma four zero zero so we're just breaking it into word form which is fine not too difficult remember the commas in your number, if you have them, the commas are there for a reason. They're there to help us break our numbers up into smaller pieces. Pieces that are easier for us to use. I'm going to look in front of this first comma. I've only got one number here in front of that first comma. What number do I have here in front of that first comma? Ezekiel, what number is here in front of the first comma? Um, four. Four, okay. And Ezekiel, is this just a, a regular everyday four? No. No, it's, it's four. four. Very good. Ezekiel, take your hand, kiss your brain. 
Very good job. It's not a regular everyday four. It is a four million. So my answer choice has to start the same way. Four million. Riley. Make sure we have a microphone muted unless we're going to answer a question. Or we have a question. <clears throat> so whatever answer choice I pick needs to start with 4 million. A says 78 million. No, 78 is nowhere close to 4. 47 million. Well, I mean, I guess it's a little closer, but it's still not correct. C says 40 million. Ooh, that is really close, but 40 is not the same as 4. Well, I've got nothing left. What's the only answer choice that it could be? Nakai? It's not here. Because none of them start correctly. It should have started with 4 million. And some of them were close, like 47 million or 40 million. But 47, 40 are not the same thing as 4. So my answer has to be D. It's not E. Question two is another place value question. The population of Mason County is 36,430,826. Which expression below shows the population of Mason County in expanded notation? It's been a little while. Who can remind me what is expanded notation? What is that? Jaylene, what's expanded notation? Expanded notation is like when all the numbers are like big and they're yes. separated. Very good way to put it. All of our numbers look really big. They look a lot longer than they actually are because they're separated. How do we separate them, Jaylene? Um, what we do is like the number at the beginning of like what section that is, you put it first and then you put the times. All right. And then you put like, and then you put like for a hundred, you put a three hundred. But what you do is you put the three and then times one hundred. Very good. We separate them using the place values, and in this case, the multiplication sign. So I'm going to take my number, I'm going to put it into a place value chart to help me keep things separated. This time I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight places. I'm going to make it eight places on my place value chart. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, eight places. I'm going to label the places on my place value chart. We're still starting with ones and tens and hundreds. And after that, comma, one, ten, hundred, comma, what place values come next? Daily, what place values would come next? Thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. Ooh, look at you. That was fast. Thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand. Then another comma. Who can tell me what comes after that second comma? What would it be next? Data. We have one ten hundred thousand ten thousand hundred thousand. And after the hundred thousand data, what's next? Million. And after the million is what data?
and million. Fantastic job. I'm going to put my number into the place value chart and make sure that those commas stay lined up. 3, 6, comma. 4, 3, 0, comma. 8, 2, 6. Okay, all right. Now, I like what Jaylene said. Expanded notation is when you separate the number and you make it look bigger. We use the place values to do that. So Jaylene, since you had the great answer, what number, what digit do I start with? Here? Um, your beginning number. Okay, and what's the beginning number in this one? The three. Okay, fantastic. The three. And is this just a regular everyday three, Jaylene? No. What is it? It is um uh ten. Million. It's in the 10 millions place. So it's 30 million. So to show that, you said I had to say I had to put three and then times, and then I gotta show 10 million, right? Yes. Okay, now with bigger numbers it can get a little confusing, but the trick I always use is to count your zeros. So if this was 30 million, all of these other place values need to be zeros. So let's see how many zeros I'm going to need, Jaylene. So the three is a three, but it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to need seven zeros to show 30 million or 10 million. Okay, so first I'm going to check my number. They all need to start with three times. Three times, three times, three times, three times. Okay. Now I need to make sure that they put the three in the right place. It should say 10 million. There should be seven zeros. Three times one million. Now that's close, but if I count my zeros, there's only six. G has three times 10 million, and if I count the zeros, they have seven. So that's okay. That's good. H has three times 10 million. They also have the correct amount of zeros. Almost, Chase. And J also has three times a million. Again, if I count the zeros, I find seven. Okay, so I got rid of one answer choice, which is good. I gotta check the next one. Who can tell me, after I have the three, what number should come next? In my expanded notation. Nakai, what number should come next? Six, and you're absolutely right, Nakai. It's six, but it's not a regular everyday six. It is six million. So, the six stays a six. Let's see how many zeros I should see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hey, that matches. Could be a six. So let's check all my answer choices. Six times. Times, times, six times. Let's check how many zeros they use. Six times, 100,000. Now oh, that's very close, but there's only one, two, three, four, five, zero. Six times one million. If I check the zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six. That one's good. If I check J, six times 100,000. Again, very close, but if I count the zeros. One, two, three, four, five. Well, I got rid of all my answer choices except for one. So, Nakai, what answer choice should I pick? 
what's left. Answer choice H. It's the only one that got past all of my checking. We'll do one last problem for today. The country of Russia has a total land area of about 17,798,000 square kilometers. The value of the seven in the millions place is blank. The place value of the seven in the hundred thousands place. Ooh, these ones. All right, first thing, still a place value question, which means I'm still gonna use a place value chart. Anytime I have a place value question, my first step should be to draw that place value chart. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight numbers, so I need eight places. I'm gonna label my place values. Ones, tens, hundreds, comma, Noah, what comes next? Ones, tens, hundreds, comma, and then what, Noah? Thousands. And after thousands? Ten thousand. Very good. And one more time, Noah, after ten thousand is? There's a pattern to our place values. It always keeps repeating. One, ten, hundred, one thousand, ten thousand. So what would be the next step in that pattern, Noah? One million? Not yet. We're skipping over one if we go to a million. Again, look at this pattern. One, ten, hundred, one thousand, ten thousand. What do you think would be that next one, Noah? A hundred thousand. Very good. Hundred thousand. Get another comma. Alexa, what are these two place values I'm missing? Wait, me? Mm hmm. One million and ten million. Perfect. Million, 10 million. Let me copy my, my number. I'm going to make sure my commas are lined up. One, seven, comma, seven, nine, eight, comma, zero, zero. Okay. And then they tell us to look at two specific digits. The seven in the millions place. So this seven right here, seven in the millions place, is blank the value of the seven in the hundred thousands. So they want us to look at the two sevens. Seven in the millions place and seven in the hundred thousands place. When we talked about these kinds of questions, we said they were always comparing place values right next to each other. And these are, I can see the numbers are the same, so it's a fair comparison. They're not cheating, one number is not bigger than the other. But the place values are different. And I told you, for these kinds of questions, there are only two answer choices that I should ever, ever, ever pick. One answer choice tells me that the number is in a bigger place value. One answer tells me the number is in a smaller place value. Who can tell me? Who remembers? If the number is in a bigger place value, how much bigger is that place value? Kylie? Ten times. Ten times. You said that quick. I'm proud of you. Awesome job. Ten times. But what if it's smaller? Who can tell me if it's smaller, 
How much smaller is that place value? Ezekiel, how much smaller is that place value? He said if it's bigger, it's 10 times bigger. But if it's smaller, it's what? Do you remember Ezekiel or do you need some help? One ten. Very good. Okay, we've talked about this, sir. Remember, if someone's answering the question, give them a chance to answer. You're absolutely right, Ezekiel. One ten. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to cross out any answer choice that is not ten times or one tenth. I'm going to see what I'm left with. A says nine times. No. B says 90 times. No. C says 1 tenth. And D says 10 times. Okay. Those are fine. But now I have to pick. I've got to choose here. 7 in the millions place. Who can tell me the 7 in the millions place? Is it bigger or is it smaller? Jada, is this bigger or smaller? Than the other seven. So we're looking at these two sevens. Is this seven the bigger seven or the smaller seven? Okay, and if it's bigger, what answer choice should I pick then, Jada? N times. My answer is D. Awesome job on that review.